Yeah, so we're gonna move uh, on to another problem in sequences and series, and it's something of a different nature. Really, is about comparing um, two sequences and see the common terms that they have and how far do they have it as the term progresses. Okay, and you got a question over here, as you can see, and I'll just um, rewrite it and kind of see what it means. Okay, there's one sequence which we denote as A N. Okay. A N and it goes like this: one followed by four. Okay, and there's another one which we didn't know as B N and it goes as nine and sixteen. Okay, both of which are arithmetic. Arithmetic. That would immediately imply that we can use the standard results that we have. That is good. Okay, so now if they go up to the twenty two hundred and fourth term. I was thinking that the paper was set in 2004, that's why you picked that number. And it will go on up to the uh, 2004th term, okay? And what they want us to find is that up to the 204th, uh, 204th term, how many terms are there which are the same, okay? That is a way to rephrase the question, which is um, how many distinct terms in S? Where s is the two, okay? You can read the question for yourself. So what we want to okay? Now we know that there's two thousand and four for a n, two thousand four as for a b. There's going to be um eight thousand uh four thousand as uh, eight, okay? But from there we need to subtract the common terms. So really the problem is reduced to finding out the common terms. Maybe that's how you know some something that can help you know reducing the problem to a certain goal, finding the common terms. So let's see how are we gonna start, okay? Now, um, what I'm going to do is this, okay, I'm going to kind of equate the two, okay, because I know that somewhere along the line the terms are the same, so I'm just going to rewrite the, the function associated with the sequence first, okay. A n is going to be um, common first term plus n take away 1 d, okay, which is going to be 3, okay. Now, I'm not going to write b n, you'll see that, you'll see that why in a minute, you see, you might be tempted to immediately write b n, b n here. Okay, and you would okay. I'll just write it out first, which is n take away one um, seven. Now, why would you not want to write that? Well, what this means is that when you put n equals to one, you're finding these two terms. When you put n equals to two, you're finding these two terms here. But that's not going to be much use because we know that that term for term they're not going to be the same. So I'm going to alter that a bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put b m. Okay. And we'll see how things work out in a minute. Okay, we are here. So basically, I can, I'm going to pick a term from here, from the N, and I'm going to pick a term from here, from the M. Okay, now obviously I know somewhere down the line they're going to be the same, right? So what I'm going to do, well, let's equate the two. Okay, equate the two here. Okay, one, okay, equating would be one, three equals to N plus M, take away one, seven. Okay, and um, just some... Um, let me just quickly do this. Um, so you know, just basic arithmetic. Okay, I'll just uh, put n at one side. No, I'll put m at one side for now. You see why in a minute later. <laughs> okay, one take away three is uh, minus two. Minus two. Okay, minus two plus five. Now, okay, let me just calculate on here. Okay, m stays here, so it's gonna be one minus three, minus nine plus seven. Okay. 3 and 4. Okay, here we go. So we got a relationship between M and, uh, M and N. So um, when N is a certain number, okay, I would find the M term that would make the number the same. But here is a key to solving this problem, which you may not have figured out by now. You see, we need to know the upper bound of the terms. What I mean by that? This okay, you notice that this term will progress much, will progress faster than this one right here. So if the common terms, how they would match up, right, is that a term from here would match up with a term from here, a term from here would match up with a term from here, and a term from here would match up with a term from here. So basically, the upper bound that we are looking for is gonna be um, the a n. Give me a second, okay. Uh, sorry, my mistake, my mistake. Sorry. Okay, my mistake. Okay, this is gonna progress faster, right? Okay, so basically the term that's gonna be here is gonna match up with the term over here. Yes. Okay. 
Sorry, I, I know I'm not perfect, but you know, at least making mistakes will make, make, make you clarify what, what's going on. Okay, so this term, there's going to be a term here, but it's going to match up with a term which is further down, further in the beginning of the series of B. And likewise for here, it's going to be here. So the upper bound that we're looking for is going to be AN. Well, I can just simply show you this, okay? Now, we will just um, sum the two, okay? No, sorry, we'll find the, the last term, the 2004 term. So basically, A2004 equals to 1 plus 2004 equal 1, 3, mm -hmm. okay, which is going to be equal to, okay, wait, sorry, 2003 times 3, 6010, okay, and B2004 is going to be a much bigger number, which is like that. So if I were to just 14,000, so if I were to write n equals to 1, n equals to 2004, okay, and then a is here, a, b is here, this is going to be 4,030, right? This is going to be 610. So basically the common term somewhere here is going to match up with the common term over here. So b, the, the, the series of b won't have terms to run out, but a is going to run out because, you know, when it reaches here, it matches here. Now when it crosses here, okay, this one is out already. So even though the common term exists for B, we cannot calculate that one because it's not in A. You, you, you understand? It's not in A in here. Okay? So we want to find this last term over here. Okay? Now, having said that, we can most probably think, right, that... Um, okay, now back to this. Okay? So remember, the upper bound is for the A. Okay, upper bound is in... A. Okay. okay? So now we got this, right? Okay, now what, what we want to do by this one, we want to find the first term that matches up with the we want to find the first term that matches up with um, A and B. Okay? Now, you can most probably already see that N is gonna be a larger number. Okay, it's gonna be a larger number here and B is gonna be a smaller number. That's the exact reason why I wrote it this way. Okay, so okay. Wait, wait, sorry, we're gonna rewrite it for um give me a second, we're gonna rewrite it for M. Okay? M is gonna be okay, you know what? Actually, yes, we'll go okay, we're gonna rewrite it for N because see N is the bigger number, so it's easier it's easier for us to find uh to put in a value for M, such as M equals to one, M equals to two, M equals to three, to get the corresponding value of N by this equation. Okay, so we we'll put um, we'll rearrange for n instead. Okay, so now remember n and m needs to be whole numbers, correct? Okay, so we start with n equals to one. N equals to one, that would be seven plus four, eleven. Eleven does not divide by three. M equals to one is out. M equals to two. Fourteen plus four equals to eighteen. Eighteen divided by three is equals to six. That's good. Okay, so when n equals to 2, n equals to 6, um, a n equals to 16, which is equal to b m. Yeah, let's just write it there. So the first common term is the second one here, and it teams up with the sixth one here. So it's got here, 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 here. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah. Okay, this one teams out here, just a 16. Okay? So, then we got our first one here. Okay, but now, we need to keep on going on. What's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? For the A enter. Okay. Um, if I